In the integrated process, the ideas are developed by the entire project team. With the discovery of an idea, smaller groups are assigned to research and refine the topic, and then the idea is brought back to the table for the whole team to make the final decision. Hence, an iterative process exists, which contains lots of feedback loops in order to establish a working system. To create an iterative process, project teams need to establish clear goals, brainstorm and develop creative and effective solutions, research and refine ideas, explore synergies between different strategies, establish metrics to measure success, and set new goals based on the work that has been done. This approach is unlike the conventional building approach in which a project team member completes a work individually and then passes it to the next person, which is also called the linear approach. In order to establish the iterative process, it is useful to conduct different types of meetings that include charrettes, team meetings, small task groups, and stakeholder meetings. Charrettes are intense workshops that are generally held in the beginning of the project and during the project milestones. These workshops bring together the entire project team, facility manager, and all the stakeholders and outside experts and consultants. Please note that the facility manager is the person that will be responsible for running the operations of the buildings after the completion of construction. Charrettes allow brainstorming and collaboration among different disciplines and experiences. An agenda and list of project goals are discussed in charrettes in order to make important decisions and agree on the project goals. With brainstorming and collaboration of the team members, charrettes will also allow the discovery of new project goals. Since charrettes are highly structured, a facilitator is also recommended. Typical stages of a charrette includes a background briefing, brainstorming among all the project team members, synthesis of work, initial response from the owner or the developer about the discussed strategies and goals, and a follow-up, which is a written report stating the identified actions that should be sent to all participants. Other than charrettes, team meetings will be helpful to discuss strategies among team members from different disciplines. As discussed, the design of a building envelope will have a great impact on the building's HVAC system. The level of insulation that a facade provides will affect the heating and cooling loads of the building, which will affect the size and type of the HVAC system to be used in the project. Thus, in a team meeting, the facade designer and MEP designer can work collaboratively to discover the best design solutions for both the facade and the HVAC system. Small task groups can also be held inside each discipline and together with the involvement of consultants. In small task groups, the participants can explore particular topics, research, and refine ideas. Then the results can be collaborated with the whole project team. And last, stakeholder meetings can be conducted among the project team, stakeholders, neighbors, and community members in order to understand and discuss community needs, issues, and concerns. It is also essential to involve the facility manager in the building design. Since the facility manager will be responsible to operate the whole building after the completion of construction, Facility managers' ideas can result in a better building design and a more efficient building operation phase. As mentioned, in the conventional building process, a design-bid-build approach was in place. The construction team was not even a part of the project team during the design phase, and moreover, the pre-design phase did not even exist. However, with the integrated project delivery, all the stakeholders, design teams, and construction teams, which really make up the whole project team, work collaboratively from the beginning of the project. This approach is called design-build. The outcome of the project will for sure depend on the professionals working in the project and the system created. Team members with green building knowledge and experience will make a big impact on the results. Lead green associates and lead APs can be sought in the team members to ensure adequate knowledge. The duty of lead AP project team member is to support and encourage integrated design 
and streamline the LEED application and certification process. A LEED Green Associate team member will have the general knowledge of green building practices and will provide support to other project team members. It is very important to remember their duties for the exam purposes. There will also be a LEED Project Administrator in the team that will be assigned during the LEED Project registration and will be the primary contact of USGBC and GBCI. The LEED Project Administrator is a team member that will act as a project manager overseeing the LEED certification process. To avoid confusion, a LEED Project Administrator does not need to be a LEED Green Associate or a LEAP AP. The duties of LEED Green Associates, LEAP APs, and LEED Project Administrator in the project are completely different.